I'm Jason, the founder here at Commusoft. And I'm Jack, sales manager here at Commusoft. Welcome to the first video in the series, Success in the Field. So let's say a company wants to improve their customer experience. Where do they start? What's step one? I mean, for me, I think you have to look at your own experiences. Mm. You know, if you, everyone has worked with companies in the past, whether it's buying something online or having someone else come to your property, you know, as a, as a, as a business, you know, you, you might be installing boilers, but at some point you might have had painters and electricians and stuff over. Mm. Look at those experiences and look at how, you know, those businesses interacted with you. I mm. mean, everyone's had these types of experiences. So you were talking to me recently about Eon and your experience with them. Mm. Yeah, I mean, a couple, a couple of years ago when I was in my old flat, um, they were doing the rounds of uh, smart meters, get your smart meter installed, you know, save loads of energy and whatnot. So I kind of jumped on it, uh, replied to the email or booked an appointment, which actually, to be fair, was okay. You know, I booked an appointment online. It wasn't a phone call or anything. Uh, I got an email the next day letting me know that it was confirmed. It was like two weeks later or something. And I, I booked a couple of days off or at least to work from home for them. I think it was one afternoon from like three till five. That, that was their window they gave me. Uh, and so I, I left work at two, got home for three, set up my laptop, I sat there waiting. Um, and as you can probably imagine, no one, no one turned up. So I was on the phone with them. They're like, yeah, no, it looks like he's got caught up another job beforehand. Um, he should be there, he should be there. And he didn't turn up, basically, at the end of the day. So we rearranged it for another time. Again, they sent me a link to, to book it online. Uh, so the next one was booked in, I think, seven days later, a week later. And the exact same thing happened again. So I booked the afternoon off work, worked from home, um, left the office, got home, set up, sat there waiting for this engineer to turn up, and then he didn't turn up again. Third time happened I exactly the same. This time he did turn up, though. Okay, so took two, okay, two got visits. Got there eventually. Got two visits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, third time he turned up. Great, we're getting a smart meter. Now, I was in a, it wasn't like a big block of flats, maybe like five, six floors. And he goes downstairs, so being in one of those blocks, the main supply of energy yeah. is all down in the car park. And so he gets down there, couldn't get into the cupboard. So he comes back up and asks me, do you have a key for the cupboard? I'm like, no, I've never been in there before. Yeah. Um, so I just thought it would be a case of him coming, installing the smart meter. And, and eventually it turned out that the smart meter couldn't be installed because the supply of the energy was too far away from my flat. So even if they could get it installed, the signal wouldn't reach. Yeah, so I come out of that. You'd think they'd know beforehand, or you'd exactly. think they'd at least ask the question, can the internet get down there, or something yeah, beforehand. Yeah, you'd think there'd be like some qualification questions to be like, how far, or do you know where the, where the supply of the energy is, or where the, the meter is? Because um, I think but, if they had turned up first time, mm. then maybe it would have been less of a negative experience, mm. because you know, they did what they said they would do. Unfortunately, it wasn't possible. Mm. No worries, let's move on with our lives. But the fact is, you had multiple access attempts or mm. multiple visits where you were in and they didn't turn up, that then led to you being frustrated and pretty irritated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, within that, there was lots of little journeys, I suppose. You know, the, the booking side was pretty easy. You know, yeah. that, that was positive. But the, the overall outcome of it, the overall experience I had was, yeah, pretty negative. We actually ended up leaving them, moving to someone else. So, which is an even bigger impact for them because it wasn't just about one visit or one smart meter, it actually mm. affected the fact that you stopped buying the energy from them. Yeah, exactly. And do you think, what do you think they could have done differently in terms of the experience to make it more positive? Mm. I mean, I think I'm only saying this because I know we do it, but on the way messages, you know, keeping, keeping the customer updated when you're actually traveling to the job. Um, maybe updates from the from the office side if they know the engineer is running late or something like that. But we should hope they would. You'd hope you'd they'd see the fact that the engineer is running late mm. and would have a process in place to call out and say, "Hey, look, I'm so sorry, we're running late. Mm. You know, can we come later that day? Maybe mm. get you know push the appointment later, or even say, look, 'Look, we'll come tomorrow.' Yeah. The fact is, it was seven more days before mm. they could come out. Was is pretty? It's quite a long time. Yeah, exactly. And if anything, it it took that engineer away from a job that he could have actually done, yeah. not necessarily just to come around and find that, that it couldn't be done in the first place. So I wonder how many of that, that, that they're doing. Yeah, I wonder. So that's my horror story of having a bad experience. I'm sure you've got a couple flying around. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> one or two. Uh, I think the most interesting like, experience I've had was uh, when I was living in my previous flat. So I, I can't remember exactly what the problem was. There was a leak or there was some issue, and the agent, because I was renting, mm. uh, said they were sending someone around. 
um, which was fairly straightforward. I actually booked it online, like I, I reported the issue online, that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got a text, which I thought was a little odd, but quite nice, from the, um, from the, the, the contractor, mm -hmm. the, the, the property maintenance company, and just said, look, can you give us a call on this number and we'll come out. The cool thing was that the number was highlighted, so mobile phone, tap, you know, call them. Mm. It was, the beginning was amazing. Like, they picked up the phone and were like, hello, Mr. Majaria, how are you today? And nice. I'm like, cool, that's, yeah, you yeah. know who I am, that's really nice. Um, and then they booked the appointment, but they couldn't book it for like 10 days or something. So I sort of was on the phone and said, yep, that, that time's fine, I'll work from home that day. That was it, booked. But then the next 10 days was very much like, is it booked? Mm. You know, I know I spoke to that person, but did it actually get booked? Like, do I need to call them and just confirm that it's definitely happening? Um, and I think as someone that's going to take a day off work and is kind of inconvenient, I didn't want to then sit in all day mm. to find that no one turned up. Why were you thinking that it wasn't confirmed? No confirmations? Or... Yeah, no confirmation. Okay. And just that sort of like mini, you know, weird anxiety around, yeah. you know, I did speak to you, but I didn't really hear anything since then. And you because it was up, 10 yeah. days, mm. it's quite a long time. It's not just two days time or something. Um, and they'd said to me on the phone, it was going to be between eight and six. Okay. So it's like an entire day, yeah, yeah, an entire day. Um, and then at five to six or 10 to six, at this point I was getting pretty irritated because they hadn't turned up all day. Uh, and I was like, now my anxiety of was it confirmed is even worse. Mm. So I call them up to say, like, what is going on? And they're like, oh, no, he definitely will be there before six. Um, and at, like, one minute to six, the guy turns up, which is fine. Technically, what Within they the said they'd do. Yeah. Technically, exactly what they said they'd do. But, like, as an experience or as a journey for me, it just wasn't necessarily a positive one. Mm. And when the guy came, he was very pleasant, really nice man, did his job, left, sorted things out, no issues. Mm. I just found that booking process to be, like... A little disappointing. Yeah. It sounds like they had the, the little like parts of it pretty well. Yeah. Right? When, when they picked the phone up, they knew you. When he turned up on site, he did a good job. So like, why do you think you still came out of it with a, with a bad, bad vibe I think, about it? Like we mentioned this earlier, right? Mm. We're so used to being, to, for companies to think about our feelings and our anxieties during their process. Mm. Someone has walked through the shoes of you know, that process. In this case, it feels like no one at that company had ever booked their own business out to come and do something. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just like walking through, walking in your customer's shoes is such mm -hmm. an important part. Yeah. I mean, if you look at Eon, like the, the conversation we were having, mm -hmm. they're a very big company. Mm, uh, and, you know, your example was maybe even slightly more advanced in the fact that this was an exception. He was running late, mm. whereas mine was they just hadn't thought of mm. sending a confirmation or something to sort of remind me that, oh, this is actually happening. Don't worry. It's in writing now. You've got it. Mm. Um, you probably had a lot of that, but the exception they hadn't covered. Yeah. So it's like we're, we're working with different types of businesses here, like mm. different scales. Yeah, yeah. You know, Eon may have got their, some of their stuff right, but the smaller businesses haven't. But I think the fact is... Small businesses also need to think about this stuff. Yeah. Even if it isn't as fancy as online booking, I think you do need to have some basic understanding of what your customers are going through. Yeah, I got a question. What, um, let's say the, the office side was really great. So yeah. you just pick the phone up, or they pick the phone up, they knew who you were, um, got the confirmation out to you. How much of a part do you think the engineer plays in the customer experience? I think the, at the end of the day, an engineer is your customer facing person, mm -hmm. right? Just like here at Comusoft, we have a client ops team, we have sales team, they're client facing. Engineers are client facing, mm -hmm. in my opinion, and they physically turn up in your house mm -hmm. or your commercial property, depending on you know, what kind of business you're in. The fact is, their attitude, their, what they do and how they behave has a huge impact on how you come away feeling about that business. So we've heard two different experiences today, both negative, but ultimately for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully, you know, so, some of the people watching this will be thinking, well, we don't do that. We don't do that. Uh, and that's great. That's, you know, that these two one-off experiences, they don't do those things. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, hopefully, though, we can help them you know, improve and look at their customer journeys to make more improvements because I think you know, everyone can improve somewhere. Yeah, I think the reality is you know, they're probably already offering a pretty good experience. Um, but there's probably things that they could do to take that even further. Just little tweaks here and there that will turn it from a, yeah, that was a, a good experience, but you know, could be better, to a, that was amazing, had a really great experience with that company, where can I leave a review? I think I, I hear that a lot, you know, uh, and the sales team do here at Comusoft is companies coming across our desks who they know that they can improve little areas, but for them it's either not the top of the, the priorities or they want a software that can kind of help with that and and I think it's more of an outcome than something actually that they're looking to do. Yeah, not so much of a focus for them. Yeah, exactly. But I think we're starting to see that kind of shift, especially especially in recent you know months is companies really seeing that, yeah, actually, we, we should start offering a bit more of a better customer experience. And it's not always a huge revolutionary change that people have to make. Mm. I mean, in your example, communication mm. would have been, you know, would have solved that problem entirely. Mm. Communicating with you that it's been a problem. Yeah, and in yours, it was more, well, I guess it was the same. It was just on a slightly different scale. Yeah, so we're talking about communicating with customers, keeping them up to date, uh, and really understanding those anxieties so that you can put measures in place so that, you know, whether it's a simple confirmation, mm. whether it's a reminder the day before, you mentioned on our way messages. Mm. I know we've seen some fantastic examples of that. Mm. Um, you know, Uber is a perfect example almost where you've got real time information. Mm -hmm. You know, you book a car, it's on its way, you can physically see that car. That's incredibly powerful. Yeah, I definitely had a few bad experiences with that though, where you see it driving the other way. Other way, yeah. And yeah. you have to cancel it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we've got two examples there. What, why don't we go through them and come up with ways that they could have gone better? Yeah, fine. All been different. So I think from my example, uh, the, 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 first, the first contact I had with them was actually really positive. Mm -hmm. A text message, quite modern, quite a nice way of receiving it. Uh, I can click on the number, again, something very positive, and they knew who I was. Mm -hmm. I would say that there could have been an option to book online. That would have been like a, an improvement. I'm not, one, I'm not one to be afraid to pick up the phone, but I do know a lot of people that would much rather click on a link mm -hmm. and book online than you know, actually have to call someone. Yeah. And at least for me, my work is quite flexible. So in the middle of the day, it's okay for me to make a phone call. Mm. Uh, I know, for example, my wife probably would never do that. Mm -hmm. um, the problem there, I think, for the business is it might have been several days or even longer before they got she got time to actually call them. Yeah. And that would have then delayed actually coming out. Even further, because exactly. it was already 10 dates, you said. Exactly. Well, they, 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 that was after I called them. Mm. So you can imagine if you aren't able to call straight away and you waited three, four, five days before you got time to call them, mm. that's even more of a delay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's not good for the, the consumer, but it's also not good for the business. Mm. They want this job done and they want to move on. They mm. don't want it set there waiting for forever. Yeah. One thing you didn't speak about on that example was payments. How did you pay? Well, for me, in this case, it was the estate agent I was renting. Oh, okay. So the landlord right. ultimately was paying. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do think there definitely, was definitely a disconnect between you know, the problem and the landlord mm. and communicating there. And I think FixFlow actually were the, was the agent's portal. It was really fantastic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really easy. So that was really positive as well. Mm. Um, I would say, though, when I was on the phone and I did sort of book an appointment, mm. first things first, what a crazy time window, eight mm. till six. Yeah. I mean, that's almost mm. criminal mm -hmm. on the basis that we have lives. You know, I had, I was, that, that meant a whole day off work, not just half a day off work. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, for a business like ours, where we work, we can, take, we can work from home, yeah. right? Yeah. No problem. But mm. if you weren't in a company that was quite as flexible, what are you going to do? Take a whole holiday day just for someone to come in and uh, to you know, solve a problem. Yeah. And I think that's where some businesses maybe aren't thinking of their customers. Mm. I mean, mine, I guess, was slightly different where I did get a bit more of a specific window, three till five. So it was a two-hour window, which I thought, going into it, amazing. You know, I don't have to take the whole day off. It's, um, it's a pretty tight window, so you know, they, they should turn up. I think one thing they could have definitely done better was just, just communicate. Yeah. You know, just let, let me know that they were running late. Or even if they said, look, we're going to have to cancel today, engineers got caught up on something else, that's, I think honesty is the, the best, best thing. Yeah, hundred percent. Exactly, hundred percent. And I think from from my example, the obvious gap was communication as well. Mm -hmm. So sending a confirmation. I've then got they sent a text. They know we, they're obviously capable of doing it, mm. but sending a text to say, "Hey, this is now confirmed date service window being 
you know, all day, but at least I've got something sent to me. Mm. Um, and because it was so far away, a reminder as well, just yeah. to say, hey, we haven't forgotten about you. This is still on the books. We'll still be doing this tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I think that would have gone a, a, you know, gone a huge way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, again, my example was with, well, I was renting at the time as well. So I didn't really have an idea of a payment, but what would you suggest in terms of ideal when it comes to having a great experience when paying for something? I think there's two, there's two outcomes to that, right? And it depends on uh, the job and the business. Mm -hmm. um, if it's me and I've done this, I actually had WPJ, one of our clients, come and do a boiler service for me last year. Mm -hmm. I've got them coming this year to do something else. Nice. Um, and they do it in a really interesting way because they do send all the confirmations and reminders. Of course they do. We've taught them well. <laughs> uh, but I think, um, and I've seen this done two ways. The first way is, on site, when the engineer arrives, he finishes his job and he says, can I have payment, please? Mm -hmm. uh, now, hopefully, it's not cash, because that's, in a, for me at least, in a modern day, I don't really carry a lot of cash. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it forces the engineer to look after it. It does. Uh, but card, you know, we can, there's card terminals now. These Bluetooth card terminals are super accessible, mm -hmm. super cheap, a, a fantastic way of doing it. Um, in this case, it was an email. So an hour, hour and a half after the job was finished, after the engineer left, I got an email from their office to say, the invoice is raised, this is what it is, click this link and pay online. Mm -hmm. And the fact that came through and it was online, I didn't have to call them back mm -hmm. because this was sort of early evening. Their office, I assume, was shut at that time. So I wasn't going to call them at that point. And again, we get into this cycle of when is a suitable time to call. Mm -hmm. um, and so at least this way, I would just, in my own time, click on the link, pay online. I got a confirmation on screen to say it's been paid, mm. thank you very much, yeah. job done. Which an hour feels like that kind of nice timing between not being too long and you're like, where's my invoice, when am I going to pay? Yeah. And being like, Jason, pay your money now. And I think from the client's perspective, there's definitely something to be said about invoicing faster. Mm. I mean, m my problem was I had a boiler service. They came, they solved that problem. Mm -hmm. And I was still in that positive mood around, yep, send me the invoice, I'll pay it. Mm -hmm. If they'd waited a week, Mm -hmm. My problem has gone by then. Yeah. And so I imagine that the uh, debtor's days for that would have been much higher. And mm -hmm. I, we could probably check. Yeah. We could probably see the, uh, the correlation between the uh, job being completed and when the invoice was sent and therefore the debtor's days. That would be quite an interesting uh, experiment for us to go and find out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, I was going into that question with the mindset that would it be a better experience as a, as a customer if you could pay there and then on site? or if the office have to do it. You know, I speak to a lot of companies who, I mean, I don't know if trust is the right word, but don't necessarily want their engineers handling payments and handling invoicing. You know, they might not know what the charges are and so on. What would you say to that? I think that, in my experience, uh, that depends on the company's size, mm -hmm. more often than not, in what they do. Not necessarily what's good, but what they do. Mm -hmm. Smaller businesses tend to be close to their engineers and give them more responsibility, mm -hmm. and therefore ask them to create invoices and take payment on site. Larger companies tend to not. Mm -hmm. I think that probably also falls to the point that smaller businesses typically have simpler types of work, i.e. boiler servicing or breakdown work, call-out work, uh, rather than maybe contracted work where rates are very different and it's yeah. much more complicated, yeah. in which case, you know, an engineer would probably not, you know, be able to do that or want to do that. Mm. I think the other thing is, you know, we're already asking our engineers to do their job, but also provide an amazing customer experience, a customer journey. Mm. Are we also then asking them to do finance? Yeah. And at what point does the balance tip from, you know what, are we going to get average all round or are we going to be able to focus our training and our coaching with our engineers on the experience that they're giving their customers and, the, mm. and how they're treating them and what they're doing versus, you know, the invoicing side of it. Mm. And again, I think that's very, very much down to company size. If I was in a smaller business with three or four people, we're going to be much closer as a team and therefore they're going to feel a lot more responsible and therefore we should be able to have a really good conversation with each other and, and that should be possible. Mm. As companies grow, and I've seen this where companies have grown from you know, very small four or five people all the way up to 50, 60 people, it becomes much more challenging. Mm. You know, you're hiring new people more regularly and you know, you're not necessarily as close to your engineers. You know, of course, we'll have little events and what have you and companies as they come together, but you don't have, you know, no one can say they have the most personal relationship with every employee in the same way, mm -hmm. uh, in a way that you say, here's 
an invoice, please raise it, and also please get it right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think ultimately it comes down to risk as well. Yeah. You know, if you've got more complicated invoicing, then risk is going to be an aspect of, is it going wrong? Are mm -hmm. we making mistakes? Yeah. And if we've raised the invoice and taken payment and it's a mistake, we then have to you know, deal with that afterwards, which I think mm -hmm. is going to be more complicated. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. I guess the last bit then that, that comes right at the end. Okay, you got your invoice, you paid it, and then feedback. Yeah. Like, how important is it for companies to ask for feedback, and does that make the experience better, even if you had a bad experience? Does getting an option to leave feedback make it better? I think if you, if you take the rule of thumb here that you tend to get more negative feedback than positive because mm. people are more willing to go online and say this was bad mm. versus this was average. Yeah, they're motivated to exactly. say it was bad. But I do think that, and I've seen lots of feedback where people go out of their way to say it was amazing. Mm. And it's important to do that because, again, if you're coaching engineers and talking to engineers about the journey they provide their customers, you know, taking their shoes off, how they treat them, you know, uh, you know are they, I don't know, I, I, I saw a story on LinkedIn once where an engineer turned up on site to this lady's house and spent half the time in the toilet. You know, that's not necessarily a good experience, a funny yeah. one, kind of, <laughs> but not a good one. Um, but I think it's important to have an outlet for customers to go back and say, mm -hmm. it was amazing or it wasn't so great, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, how are you supposed to go back to your engineers, and how are you supposed to look at your business as a whole mm. if you have no idea how successful it's being? Yeah, yeah. And they, from the ones I've seen, the feedback can be pretty vocal in terms of where the holes were lying yeah. in the journey. In the Absolutely. Experience. And I think the question then is, how do you make getting that feedback as automated as possible, mm -hmm. because you don't want it to be another admin task yeah. your office has to do, you know? Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and I, I mean, I have been asked before about engineers getting you know, feedback from site. Sort of, here's my tablet. Mm -hmm. Would you mind filling in a feedback form? With the engineer in front of them. Exactly. Right. I don't know how you would feel about it. Yeah. Personally, I wouldn't be super happy Probably about it. Probably a little bit pressured bit to pressured. give marks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a bit like when, again, when you get an Uber driver and he says, please give me five stars <laughs> yeah. when you get out. It's kind of like, yeah. okay, I'll do that for you. But really, you, you might not be feeling that way. Yeah, yeah. It's a good um, point. And there's the obvious, the engineer filling it in for you, yeah. not telling you. But yeah. I think, yeah, feedback is 100% important. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you then take that feedback and try and use it to get you know, public reviews mm -hmm. is a different story. We're mm -hmm. not talking about customer journey then. We're talking about marketing and we're talking about you know, uh, the PR of the business and how the world sees it, mm -hmm. which is just as important. Yeah. But I think in terms of today's conversation, I think uh, that's maybe a step too far. Yeah. Cool. So what do you think the takeaways are from today? So I think there's actually seven, from me anyway. Um, and they, they kind of follow the process of the, the customer experience, the customer journey, right? So you've got the, the experience they get when they call up the customer. This is when the customer calls the, the business and the feeling they get on the phone and if they're able to say, oh, hi, Mr. Sergeant, good to hear from you again. Uh, and they've got their information there and then. The next bit is uh, things like confirmations and reminders. Yeah, if the job is 10 days away, a confirmation right after the booking has taken place, and then maybe a reminder two days before, a reminder the morning of the job. Uh, that kind of leads on to the third one is the on-the-way message. You know, whether they include the, the location of the engineer or not is, is debatable, but um, it's just a, a live message to let them know when they're actually on, on the way to the job. Um, the fourth one is if it's a quote or an estimate that we're doing, once the quote does get created, how does the customer get it? You know, is it just a PDF where they have to then call the office back or reply to the email, or they might then maybe take one or two days to see, or is it just a link they can click on, they can accept it online? Um, so that's kind of tying quotes into it. Uh, fifth one is the engineer. How's the job when they're on site? You know, do they take their shoes off? Do they put a dust sheet down? Do they, uh, do, they do it in a quick and tidy manner? Um, sixth one then leads on to invoices and payments. So are you t taking payment on site? Are you sending an email with a link to click on and pay the invoice there and then? Or is it a case of calling the office and paying it over the phone? You know, one of those three, three things. And the last one is feedback, like we just finished up the last bit on. You know, is there a link they can click on that they get sent a day later to leave some feedback? Or is it a case of the engineer sitting in front of them with a, with a sheet to fill out? Yeah. I think those are the, the seven for me. What about you? I think... In our examples today, communication seems to come up a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, people need to figure out how and when to communicate with their customers. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is to walk in your customer's shoes. Map it out. Big whiteboard. What other stages the customer goes through. And even when the stages when there's nothing going on, you know, ordering parts. Have you told them that you've ordered them? 
Have you told them when they've been delivered and when they're likely to be installed? Mm -hmm. Things like that, I think, are so vital in the communication process. Mm. And I think it's important that businesses do map it out because if you map it out, then you can introduce you know, rules and, and processes to make sure that every single customer journey is on point. Yeah, I think the important takeaway is the experience is, a, is an outcome. Yes. And it's the journeys that make up that outcome. You know, you could have seven journeys, like I said, six of them are bad, but one of them was amazing. And then you come out of it with a, with a positive experience. Yeah. And I think each journey is weighted differently. Mm -hmm. You know, if they don't answer the phone with, hello, Mr. Sergeant, but they do confirm and give you all of that reassurance in terms of the booking process and they have a reasonable service window, mm. ultimately that's a more important journey to the end customer than you know, whether they pick the phone up. Yeah. Well, uh, ultimately, you know, in a perfect world, we'd have both, but we're not, we don't live in a perfect world. So mm. I think if you're going to focus on different journeys and how to improve them, let's focus on the big ones. Yeah. So thanks for joining us for the first episode in our Success in the Field series. I think we covered quite a lot. I think so too. And if you guys have any feedback or any customer experiences, good or bad, that you want to share with us, let us know and leave a comment.